In this lesson, I'll show you two more examples on how to solve combined variation application problems. Let's start with question one. The time needed to empty a vertical cylindrical tank varies directly as the square root of the height of the tank and the square of its radius. By what factor will the emptying time change if the height is doubled and the radius is increased by 25%? The first thing that I want to do to tackle this problem is to assign letters for the variables that they've given us. They tell us that the time, which I'll represent as t, to empty a vertical cylindrical tank varies directly. So I'll write down t is equal to k as the square root of the height. So I'll say h is equal to the height. And you always want to introduce a constant k, the square root of h, and the square of its radius, where r represents the radius. Since both of these are directly, I'll write down r up here, where I have r to the power of 2. By what factor will the emptying time change? So I'll represent the new time as t prime, t with an apostrophe, if the height is doubled. So height is now 2 times the original, and the radius is increased by 25%. So r is equal to 1.25 of the original r. Let's substitute these values where we have the h and the r. We end up with k, the square root of 2h times 1.25 r to the power of 2. Notice that I'm placing 1.25 r within brackets and the 2 outside. That's very important, and I'm going to explain why in a moment. The next step is to simplify wherever we can on the right side of this equation. So by putting these brackets around both the 1.25 and the r, now I can distribute this 2 to 1.25 and to the r. In addition, you see the square root of 2h? Well, remember what the square root of 2h means. The square root of 2h actually means 2h to the power of 1 half. Now just like what we did here where we distributed this 2 to both of these components, I can distribute this half to the 2 and to the h. So technically, I'm giving this 2 its own square root and this h its own square root. Let's go ahead and write that down. We have k times the square root of 2 times the square root of h times 1.25 to the power of 2 r squared. What I'll do next is multiply all the numbers out. So I'll multiply the square root of 2, I know that's a number, and 1.25 to the power of 2 is also a number. Using my calculator, I'll write down the square root of 2 times 1.25 to the power of 2. This gives me approximately 2.21. 2.21, and everything that's left over, this k, the square root of h, and r squared, remains there. Therefore, we can say that t prime is equal to 2.21 of, and notice that this looks identical to our original t. So instead of this, I can write down t. Now, since they're asking for a factor, our answer is 2.21 times the original t. But if they're asking for a percentage, you would say that the original time will have to increase by 100 and 21% of the original. Let's move on to question two. The kinetic energy of a moving body is directly proportional to its mass and the square of its speed. So I'm gonna represent Ke as kinetic energy. Also, M will be mass and S will be speed. I've defined all my variables. If the mass of the bullet is halved, by what factor must its speed also be increased to have the same kinetic energy as before? So let's set up an equation for the before scenario. We have kinetic energy is equal to k or constant, mass, which is directly proportional, and the square of the distance, so s squared. These are the before conditions. The after conditions, mass has become half of the original, and we're looking for speed. To denote the difference between the original speed and 
the final speed, I can write down S subscript F or S prime. I'll just use S prime, but feel free to use S subscript F. This is what we're looking for. You have to ask yourself, what has remained consistent in the before scenario with the after scenario? The only things that have changed is the mass and the speed of which we're looking for. What has remained the same is the kinetic energy. So let's represent another equation for the after conditions. We have kinetic energy which has remained the same, K which we don't know, M has become 0.5 of the original. Remember 0.5 and half is the same thing. So this expression and this expression mean the same thing. And our S is what we're looking for. S prime squared is what we're looking for. Now, because the kinetic energies are the same in both of these equations, let's set them equal to each other. We have KMS squared, this equation, specifically this part, is being set equal to this part. Now, take a look at this equation. We have a K on the left side, a K on the right side, an M on the left side, and an M on the right side. If I were to divide both sides by K and M, so dividing both sides by K and M, this K will cancel out with this K, M with M, K with K, M with M, leaving us with a simplified version of the equation. The original speed is equal to 0 0.5 S prime squared. What we are looking for is S prime. So now you have to ask yourself, what do we have to do to isolate for S prime? What I would do from here is square root both sides. If I square root both sides, the square root here and this 2 will cancel each other out, leaving us with simply s. And this square root and this square will cancel out, leaving me with the square root of 0 0.5. And this part has become s prime. One more step, and I have my s prime. All I have to do is divide both sides now by the square root of 0 0.5. Or you can evaluate this and then divide, but it doesn't really matter, leaving us with the square root of 0 0.5 is equal to s prime. So let's find out how we have to change the speed for the kinetic energy to be the same. I'll use my calculator. And remember, this s over the square root of 0 0.5 is the same thing as saying 1 over the square root of 0 0.5. So using our calculator, 1 divided by the square root of 0 0.5 gives us the square root of 2, which is equal to approximately 1.41. So we have to increase the original speed by a factor of 1.41 so that when we have the mass, we still maintain the same kinetic energy. Another way to think of this is that we have to increase the speed by 41% of the original S. And so there you have it. Two more examples on how to solve combined variation application problems.